Um, so before starting, uh, we would like to know a bit more on your expectation for today. Um, to, do, to do this, we would like to use a, an application, which is Taxoon, that you might know. Um, and we will use Klaxoon uh, a bit later when we will discuss uh, green budgeting. So if you could all join Klaxoon uh, with this link, and Sebastian, we will, will put the link uh, into the chat box so you can join. Uh, and I will show you how does it look like uh, here. Uh, normally you can see my screen. So in this board, if you can put uh, your post it and you can put your name and then your organization, your country maybe if you want to, and what you what are your expectations for today? So for instance, for me, it will be going further um, with other. Yes, so on green budgeting. Okay. So if you can all do this, and I will let maybe two or three minutes for everyone to connect and to post its own post it. Yes, I can see first state from Sebastian. Hi, hi, Oli. Perfect. Hi, Sofia from Portugal. To better understand how I can introduce green budget in Portugal. Great. Jonas, that we will hear a bit later, learn more about how other NGOs work. From Germany, we have Mati. Hi, Mati. Hi, Marion. Okay, networking, new international experiences. Okay, to know more about what other CSOs are doing as well. Okay, we have Maria, Institute of Public Finance, Croatia. How likely is to introduce green budgeting in Croatia? Nice. Joachim from IISD, understanding how green budgeting works in different contexts and how it can be applied by CSOs. Very interesting. Okay, that's great. Another person from Germany to learn more about green budgeting and best practices. Hi, Andreas uh, from Hungary, to learn also about uh, IDs and other organizations' IDs. Okay, so we will try to, to share the experiences today from four different organizations. I hope this can give you some some ideas about what is uh, what is done so far uh, in France, Slovenia, and in Luxembourg. Um, thank you for the participation. Uh, keep Klaxon open because we will use it a bit later. Uh, and I will share the agenda for today. So today we will start with the general presentation on green budgeting. 
what is green budgeting, what are the objectives of such a tool, and what is doing the European Commission, what is the European context on green budgeting. And then we will have four different speakers sharing their own experience with green budgeting. So first, Jonas Sonnenschein from Humanoterra uh, from Slovenia. And then uh, Sebastian Postik, my colleague at I4C uh, in France. And after that, we will have Emeline Notari from the Climate Action Network in France. And after a coffee break, we will have the experience from Muriel Boucher uh, from the IDEA Foundation in Luxembourg. And after that, we will have um, two discussion sessions. The first one will be more about uh, your action that you could implement in your country. And the second one will be more about um, our future as a network and um, as CSOs, how could we implement some collaboration um, together? And finally, we would like um, to share with you um, Sebastian Works uh, about the current study that we are developing at IFRC about social consideration in green budgeting. So first, uh, what is green budgeting? So green budgeting exercise is about assessing every budget items. So revenues and expenditures and tax expenditure. And when you have the budget doc document, then you identify every line that can have a positive or negative impact on environmental objectives. Environmental objectives can be climate, but uh, also biodiversity, air pollution, water pollution, um, or other environmental objectives. And when you have identified the line, then you can associate monetary volumes and discuss the monetary volume with the members of the parliament or with the government or with other CSOs. You can discuss both figures and discuss about how much money is spent in climate, how much money is spent in environmental action or in damaging actions. I wanted to share in this slide uh, also a bit more uh, what can a green budget look like. So in the picture, you can see the, what has done the French government in 2021 uh, for the 2022 budget. So on the left, you can see that they have estimated to spend about 25 billion euros in favorable actions, uh, so in green. And on the left side of the picture, you can see that this is where the challenge here is. Because um, here, uh, for the tax expenditures, you can see that there is uh, almost 10 billion euros spent in harmful objectives. So this is where, uh, where the, the French government has uh, definitely something to, to change. Uh, and you can see also uh, a mixed category. Uh, I will explain it a bit later, what is the mixed uh, category. But first, I would like to say um, what a green budget enables to do. So, a green budget is here first to give you a macro view of the budget. What is harmful? What is beneficial for the environment? So it helps to identify and to understand the impact of the budget on the environment. Second, a green budget, a green budget exercise will help to see if there are any inconsistencies between the climate goals that you have and what you vote, what is the budget voted. So with other words, it, it is here to assess um, the alignment uh, of the budget with the climate objectives or with the environmental objectives that you have. And by doing so, by doing your green budget, the results will help the decision makers in guiding the budget, in redirecting the bond expenditures when it is possible and to check if the green expenditures are sufficient or enough to achieve the objective that we, um, that we have voted, that the officials uh, have voted. 
and finally, um, the results are very interesting, but what it is even more interesting is to follow the green budget year after year and to see if the budget colors are changing over time. So to monitor development. So um, about the mixed item I just talk, talked about. Um, so there are uh, some expenditures that can be positive on one uh, objective, but that can be negative on another objective. Uh, so some uh, example of the environmental objective that you can find. So mitigation, adaptation, water pollution, waste, air pollution, and biodiversity are the six um, environmental objectives that the French government is considering. Um, they are also the same objectives for the EU taxonomy. But of course, you could have different uh, objectives. And I wanted to show you that it is, uh, as I said, possible to have mixed impact. Uh, for instance, if you develop a new train line, then of course it would be positive on climate mitiga mitigation because you will develop uh, public low carbon transport, but um, it will also have negative impact on biodiversity, for instance, because you will take the land from, from the nature. So it is important as well to show uh, the different aspects and the positive and the negative impact to help uh, the decision makers to know what they are voting and to know what they are deciding for. Um, why doing a green budget? Why do we look at the budget? So first, the Budget vote is, uh, as you all know, a key moment and decisions on climate actions must, must be made at this, uh, at this moment when, when we vote the budget. So there are different objectives why we are doing a green budget. And we see at I4C four main objectives to pursue as a CSO with a green budgeting exercise. So first, it will, um, a green budget will help to inform the decision makers, to inform the, the, the makers and the users of the budget. And second, uh, it will help to assess the, the greenness of the budget. Um, so a green budget is a necessary step to increase the consistence, consistency of public policies vis-a-vis -vis environmental objectives. And this is when, when you have a green budget, you can use it to signal uh, to your government or to whoever you want that there is an inconsistency with the objectives and the policies that are in place. Um, and third, a green budget responds as well to a demand from, for transparency from citizens. Uh, this is something especially true in France after the Yellow Vest movement, I'm sure you heard about. Um, the French government wanted to explain better what they were doing uh, for the transition and how. So they, they use uh, the Green Budget Report to do, to do so. And then a Green Budget is also a first step um, and it does not give all the answer and it is um, something to say, okay, here we need a deeper analysis. Here we need uh, more analysis to know, to know better what are the impact on climate for, for such policy, what are the impact on biodiversity for this policy. So this is yeah, a first step. Um, so as we have just seen the different objectives that you can pursue when you are doing a, a green budget, but it also depends on when and how the green budget exercise is integrated in the national budgetary process. So here you can see on the slide uh, the four main stages that you can find in, in a normal budgetary process. So first you have the planning of the budget and then you have the vote, the approval, 
And after that, you have, of course, the implementation of what has been voted. And after you have the audit of the budget. And you can see below the objective for green budgeting. So for instance, if the government does a green budgeting before the beginning of the year when they are planning the budget, uh, then it will help the decision makers in their vote or in the construction of the budget. So for instance, in France, uh, when the government has done the recovery plan, uh, our president um, asked for a recovery plan with no harmful expenditure in it. So they used the green budget methodology to know that there were no harmful expenditure. And this was the first time in France. Um, so they used the green budget methodology to do so. If we go a bit uh, on the European level, so maybe I would like to give you a, a quick, a quick uh, glance of the European context and how green budgeting has been developed. So in 2017, the OECD at the One Planet Summit uh, launched the Paris Collaborative on Green Budgeting. And France and Mexico were identified as uh, co-leaders on, on this practice. In 2020, uh, as you know as well, I'm sure the EU budget was voted for the 2021-2027 period. And it was decided that 30% of this budget will be spent to fight climate change. So, and this was um, something, uh, something for the first time. And in 2021, uh, in order to receive support from the EU uh, for the recovery and resilient facility, each member state uh, has to prepare a recovery plan. And the EU asks that each uh, member state uh, have 37% uh, supporting the green transition. Uh, so that was the first time as well. Um, to do so, the member states were using a methodology, uh, using the real marker systems and using the EU taxonomy that uh, has been developed as well. Uh, and, and the commission asked also uh, to respect the do not significant harm principles, which means that they, uh, there is no measures leading to significant harm in, in the recovery plan. Uh, on the right, you can see a little graph and you can see that 40% of all the recovery plans uh, from, the, from the EU member states are um, achieved as climate spending. In 2022, the EU Commission has launched a training on green budgeting and 23 member states uh, volunteer to be trained on green budgeting. And it comes especially for, our, for the ministries of finance, which was uh, something interesting. And the EU Commission also launched a survey um, to know what are the practices uh, on green budgeting and the EU Commission identified 11 countries that uh, are doing some form of green budgeting. Um, in 2022, uh, the EU taxonomy was adopted as well. Uh, and the taxonomy gives uh, what is green in the economic activities, and it can be used to, to give a first um, if it can give gu guidelines to the government uh, on, on some actions to identify what is green and it can be used to develop the green budget methodology. Um, so it is supposed um, to, that the uh, complementary delegated act will be adopted or not uh, on gas and nuclear in July. So you are uh, aware uh, about the heated debate around these two uh, economic activities, I'm sure. And there is no 
uh, brown taxonomy as well, but this is something that the EU um, taxonomy, uh, EU platform on sustainable finance is working on as well. So maybe just a quick, uh, quick picture of, about the taxonomy I just mentioned. So this taxonomy can be used to define what is green, and this can be useful to know um, to 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 construct to build the methodology on green budgeting. But the taxonomy has been made for financial investors and not for public entities. And it is not giving as well the brown items. So it is not sufficient enough to have a, a comprehensive methodology on green budgeting. But it, you know, it is, it is a, a first, a first term. Um, in the taxonomy, an activity can be considered as sustainable if it will contribute to one objective. Um, and the objectives are the six that we have just seen. And it can be sustainable as well if it respects the do not significant harm principle, which is very important. And it has also to respect what they call the technical screening criteria. So if you contribute to mitigation, for instance, you have to respect some uh, criteria on the GAG emissions that the taxonomy will give you. And those criteria are available for mitigation and adaptation. And they are um, developing the criteria for the, for the other objectives. And it's supposed to be done by the end of this year. And the activity has to respect as well uh, minimum guarantees in labor and in human rights. Uh, so the sectors where the taxonomy applies are the following, but you can all find uh, the sectors in the source I just put here. And in parallel to the taxonomy, the European Commission has developed a framework on green budgeting. And this framework gives five dimensions to consider when you develop a green budgeting exercise. So the first dimension is coverage. Is the green budgeting exercise only about climate? Is it about other environmental dimension? Do you consider only green or do you consider also brown expenditures? Is it about the state budget, but also the local budget? Do you consider only the expenditures or also revenues and even tax expenditures? And the second dimension is about the methodology. Do you do light tagging or do you consider also the impact of, of uh, an expenditure on climate, for instance, which could be the CO2, uh, the CO2 emissions measure? Or do you look at the contribution of the expenditures or do you look at the purpose? Uh, which can be the, the reason uh, the reason of the of the expenditure. If you look at the deliverables, which is the third dimension in the framework, um, you ask, uh, is the green budgeting report only about budgetary, budgetary plans? Is it about executive budget? Is it about multi-annual plans or only recovery plans? So depending about what the green budgeting report is. Uh, and the fourth dimension is also to consider the governance. Uh, who is doing the green budget? Is it the Ministry of Finance? Is it the Ministry of the Environment? Is there a special task force dedicated to? So this is some question that you can ask as well. And the fifth dimension is about transparency. Uh, are the deliverables public? Is there any independent evaluation? Is there a session in the parliament to discuss the green budgeting? So those are uh, some dimensions that the EU is giving to the government to do their own green budgeting. And something that the European Commission promotes as well is that there is no one size fits all methodology. 
So the European Commission promotes national approaches for green budgeting. This is also something important um, in this process. Um, in this slide is just to sum up what I have just said. If you want to go a bit further, you can read the slide later. I will uh, send you the presentation just afterwards. So just uh, for you to, to know that we are uh, doing a project in collaboration with Expertise France and with the EU Commission. Uh, so we are building capacity uh, for EU member states on green budgeting. So we are giving uh, to the EU member states uh, free trainings. Um, the first training is an introduction to green budgeting. Um, this is what I'm basically doing here, but a bit, uh, a bit deeper. And then we, will, we have two um, mother, module, uh, two training. Uh, the second module is more about uh, the methodology and we go a bit deeper with the member states about what are their challenges, the methodological challenges that they can encounter. And the third module is more about how they can implement uh, a green budgeting exercise uh, in their uh, national budget. Uh, these training are for the Ministry of Finance and for the Ministry of Environment. And 23 member states have registered, have volunteered for this uh, training. Here is a map uh, of the member states that have registered. So maybe you can see uh, your own country. So it means that they have volunteered for the training. And here is a slide about the um, uh, member states uh, that are doing a green budget exercise. So you can see that 11 countries are doing uh, some form of green budgeting and, then, and that six countries are planning to do something about green budgeting. And this is some, um, a survey that has been conducted by the European Commission uh, last year. So in our experience as a think tank, as a CSO, and because we have also exchanged with other CSO, we have seen that uh, it is really important to, um, to engage the CSO in the implementation of green budgeting. Uh, of course, because uh, NGOs or think tanks or members of the civil society can ask uh, their own government for more transparency and green budgeting is a way for the government to respond to this demand. And it is also important that uh, when there is a green budgeting exercise it, uh, that the civil society is able to assess what has been done, to see if the quality uh, of the work is sufficient. Uh, because a green budgeting must not be used to greenwash the budget. So it is important as well to engage the CSO here to alert if there is a, a problem on, on the green budget. Uh, and of course, CSO's work will also help to consider the results of a green budget exercise in the public debates and to make uh, the green budgeting exercise uh, more useful and, and more uh, livelier, <laughs> livelier for the public debates, I would say. Uh, so for my last slide, um, here is a list about um, the climate consult that I found. Uh, so maybe it's just a slide to engage a bit more the discussion later when we will have the discussion group. Um, um, and it is, uh, if, you, if you see that there is a consult that is missing, please let me know. And it is something that we can discuss later, but maybe it will be a possibility to ask uh, the councils 
to audit green budgeting reports or to ask them to have a discussion with the government uh, about the green budgeting exercise. And here are all the resources that I have used for the presentation. So you can find uh, all here. And um, as I said, I will share the presentation uh, with you afterwards so you can, um, you can consult it later. And with this, I will let the floor to Jonas to share with us uh, the Slovenian experience uh, with green budgeting. Thank you, uh, Marion. Uh, I hope you can hear me all of you. Yes, okay. Um, yes, I will present to you in 10 minutes our experience with green budgeting. When I say our, that is uh, Uman Oter, the Slovenian Foundation for Sustainable Development. Um, I will not talk so much about the concept as such, but how we have approached the work as an NGO with, with green budgeting. Um, maybe we can go immediately to the next slide. Yes. So when I talk about green budget, I usually talk about the process. So um, we never will achieve a green budget, but we can make maybe green it uh, further and further. We have actually started the work in 1996, 1997, when also this organization was, was started with a big international symposium, also a chapter on Slovenia as a case study, green budget reform in Europe. Also the years afterwards, my colleagues have worked with Green Budget Europe, which was a project of uh, Forum Ökosoziale Marktwirtschaft from Germany. And in the early years, it was really focused on the ecological tax reform, shifting taxes from goods, from bads to goods, from, from shifting, uh, from goods to bads. So from shifting labor taxation to uh, resource use taxation and pollution taxation. Uh, and the focus of our work at that point was really to establish the concept green budget reform, which was really new and establish it in key national uh, documents. Uh, maybe uh, next step, yes. And then we actually started working more in depth with the issue and researching green budgeting ourselves after the financial crisis. Probably you all remember that that was a time when there was a huge pressure on many member states of the European Union to consolidate public finances. And we thought at that time that it's a very good moment to uh, lobby for um, getting rid of environmentally harmful subsidies and raising more public revenue through green taxes. So this was really a, a window of opportunity. So when Marianne said before, timing is key, I completely agree. Um, at that time, uh, also policymakers were very open to that uh, new concept and new ideas. And I, I will get back to that in a second. Um, maybe one more click, yes. In the years throughout the 10, 2010s and, and, and up until today, we have then also worked with local budgets. We have researched uh, uh, municipal budgets and how they can be green. I don't want to focus that much on that today because uh, it's maybe not so relevant for you. And also I think at least in Slovenia, municipalities have way less room for maneuver because they don't collect so many own resources. There are some, some revenues they generate at the local level, but it's, it's very few. Um, but if you're interested, feel free to contact me. Um, then more recently, um, we also uh, researched more on a qualitative basis what is preventing government institutions and ministries from engaging more actively in green budgeting? And I also will get back to that research. Um, if I can maybe put our work into several time intervals, I would say in the beginning, it was really a focus on the ecological tax reform, shifting taxes from, from uh, labor, which is a good thing. We want more of that to, towards pollution, uh, like it also happened in some Scandinavian countries in Germany. Also, CO2 tax was introduced back then in, in Slovenia. Then after the uh, global financial crisis, the focus was clearly on harmful subsidies and budget consolidation. And then the past years, we have really worked mainly on greening spending. So, so again, a different focus, greening EU spending, greening recovery spending, also going into the budget in more detail. Now, this is just a prediction for the future, uh, at least, uh, Speaking about Slovenia, our past government, which was uh, luckily voted out of office last weekend, 
um, spent extremely much money during the pandemic, not on green uh, issues, not necessarily on the transition at all. But this is money that has been spent and is missing from, from, from public budgets. So the debt burden is getting bigger and this is happening in many countries. So I think not this year, not next year, but at some point in this decade, we will also probably have another push for fiscal consolidation again. And I think this is, again, a good opportunity to then not focus maybe so much on green spending, but on uh, tax expenditures, on harmful subsidies, on, um, on, on maybe collecting uh, more environmental taxes. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, when we talk to decision makers and also when we then uh, run public, uh, public campaigns, we, we separated uh, the strategies into four boxes, spend less, spend better, raise more and raise better. And this has proven very good kind of scheme to also then uh, place different measures that governments can take into these different boxes. Um, we also, for the first time in Slovenia, research environmentally harmful subsidies use a little bit our own, own uh, methodology. I think the methodologies that are available now, be it from the OECD, from the European Union, also what you are doing at IPOCE, are so much more advanced than what could be found uh, uh, still 10 years ago. Or 15 years ago. So these are really good tools that are to be used. However, as a small NGO, I think there's always the need to focus. There's very limited capacity, at least for us, to do every year such an analysis. It's impossible if you don't have a project. So then it's really a question of focusing. Uh, maybe we can go to the next slide. Uh, yes, we focused on environmentally harmful subsidies and research that. Um, uh, this was one campaign we did. If you go to the next slide, uh, we also looked at uh, motor vehicle taxes, for example, uh, just very basic simulations of what could happen. The blue line back then uh, represented the, the progressive uh, motor vehicle tax that was already uh, in 2010 based on CO2, but we said it's way too low. It ranged from zero to 25% and, and suggested to actually quadruple that, that tax rate. Um, yes, thank you. Um, this is a good case how actually an NGO can have an impact. So we did the research, which was really new back then in 2012, 2013. Then based on this research, ran a campaign, which was called Let's Turn the Minus into a Plus, uh, with lots of public communications, with media, with social media, and also having our own petition platform back then, which was similar to change.org or ABAS. It was called Um, We then also had a big uh, public petition to call for the phase out of environmental harmful subsidies and, and to enact more progressive environmental taxes. So it was really, we, we managed to bring this topic to the media. We also were invited then to the parliament, to the, um, I think, environment and, and the financial uh, council meetings and could present it there. And as a consequence of that, I don't know, I hope at least a little bit, then if you go to the next slide, we, um, the, the new government in 2014 included green budget reform as a central project in the coalition agreement. So this was then the first time that also the government actively had to engage with the topic. Um, they screened public expenditure mainly, but also tax expenditure. Um, this graph shows basically the big budget items, so uh, which is another um, maybe hint at the fact that it's good to focus. I don't think an NGO and maybe not even every government should really screen every year several times the whole budget, but it's clear where we can find the, the harmful, the big chunks of the harmful spending, the big chunks of the, of the positive spending. And once you've gone through that process, you know where to search for the uh, really harmful items. So this is just another call to really prioritize what is important. Uh, maybe next uh, slide, just as a very quick overview. This was much more basic than what was done in France um, back then in 2017. Okay, they had it in the 2014 coalition agreement. Actually, remember that then three years later, almost at the end of the term. So in 2017, they did the research. They just looked at impact on air, soil, and water. They also had three categories. Uh, lowering environmental damages, 
making environmental damages worse and something in between potentially lowering. So this is very similar to the, to the French approach that, that Marion already uh, 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 referred to. Also very important, I think, for the practical work with the topic is to, to maybe group expenditure or tax expenditure and, and, and taxes by sector because ministries very often still work in their silos. So I think this was very good that even though there was a cross ministerial working group on the topic, there still were these, these uh, topic areas that were covered one after the other. Okay, uh, yes. What are we doing now in Slovenia? Okay, we are in the OIKI uh, project on greening EU finances. So we have been very active in following the, the um, recovery plan. Um, here, I would just highlight, even though we have a much more detailed methodology, the devil is really in the detail. Slovenia has 40% of climate spending, but there are at least 15% that are highly questionable that I would um, never classify as pro-climate spending. So I think it's really important to look at, at the specific investments uh, because these global numbers can, can be very, very misleading. Um, yes, when it comes to the national budget, uh, the government always promised to repeat this exercise. So that's why I'm not surprised that in the graph Marion showed, showed Slovenia is in the group of countries that have plans to introduce green budgeting. Um, so there was a plan actually to do this exercise every two years, but I haven't seen any report coming out of the Ministry for Finance after this one first report. Uh, also, the past government was not really keen on any environmental issues, so maybe the new government will, will pick up that, uh, that work again. Yes, as Maria mentioned, in Slovenia there was already the capacity building workshop. Also, from our experience, we are mainly working with the Ministry for Finance. Um, and we hopefully will have in one month a new government that is much more open to, to our suggestions and ideas. Um, there are many, many details when it comes to green budgeting. Maybe there are one or two that I want to highlight. There are some dilemmas when it comes to harmful subsidies. Um, this is not on this slide, but I want to highlight it anyways. Uh, much is tax expenditure, and there is this kind of contradiction. Countries that have high fuel taxes have also higher tax expenditure. So increasing taxes is something we want, but with increasing taxes, we at the same time increase harmful subsidies. So this is a dilemma uh, that I think we also as campaigners should be aware of, that a high amount of tax expenditure doesn't necessarily mean something super bad, um, but it really has to depend then on the detail. Uh, considering the time, I don't think I have time to go into every barrier here, but this was a really interesting exercise. We interviewed all ministries, uh, several public institutions that are working with budgets, and, and, and check why is it not happening? We've had green budgeting in strategic documents, government documents for more than 20 years and, and not much is happening. And yes, governments working or ministries working in silos is a huge issue. People from the Ministry of Finance think that the environmental ministry doesn't understand their language. There's a lack of continuity. This is projects from one, minister, from one government, the next government still has a new priority. So some institution, central institution is missing. Um, political will is clearly an issue. There are also structural factors in Slovenia. Uh, if we get rid of tax expenditure, then many of the logistics companies fill their trucks in Austria or in Croatia or in Hungary. So uh, this doesn't solve the environmental issue, but then we have less tax revenue within the country. So there's this tax competition that is a big, big barrier. And economic competitiveness as the kind of general argument we always hear from the ministry for. Uh, both economics and, and, and finance. Uh, I will stop here because I'm running out of time, but um, maybe then in the debates, we, I can add some more detail to the general overview. Yes, great. Thank you, Jonas. And indeed, um, we will have more time in the discussion session afterwards um, to, to discuss a bit uh, more um, for the, the, the presentation. Uh, I will let the floor for Sebastian to present uh, the French story about green budgeting. Sebastian, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mario. Um, maybe I can try and share the screen. 
Sehr schön. What change which bit I will have to ask you each time. Okay. Can you see my screen correctly now? Yes. Perfect. So I'll try to, to be quick uh, since Marion already presented. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm in the beginning of the presentation. Moving down, down, down. Okay. So I'll, I'll try to be quick since we are already late. Uh, so that's to complement uh, what uh, Marion has already said with the specifics of the, the French uh, case and uh, uh, where it comes from and what, what we've been uh, trying to, to do as I foresee within the, the French context. So maybe some uh, one step back, uh, this issue of uh, green budget tagging has existed uh, outside of Europe. Uh, like in Europe as well, as uh, Jonas was uh, presenting just before, but uh, also outside of Europe, there has been a lot of uh, trying to, to, to map and tag uh, expenditure related to climate uh, in, a, in a slur of countries. But we've seen really a, a new wave of interest in Europe. In France, uh, the first formal uh, commitment was made in 2017 uh, at the One Planet Summit. Uh, that was hosted in France and that was uh, below the, the OECD uh, um, auspices uh, that uh, France and Mexico uh, uh, committed to, to produce this green budget, but nothing moved much in France until we got in, in 2019, uh, sorry, 2018, doesn't work, yeah, okay, in 2018, the, the, the yellow vests. And that was really a, a big demand of uh, transparency uh, for the government on where did the, the money of the energy taxes go. And uh, the government, the French government uh, took it as a request to, to better uh, answer on the, 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 the effort that they were doing uh, for, for climate with their national budget. So uh, in 20, at the beginning of uh, 2019, uh, the, the first joint task force between the, the the environment and, and finance ministry uh, was was launched. Sorry, I'm seeing something in the discussion. Okay, fine. And, uh, and the, the, the first pilot uh, of the methodology was produced in, in September 2019. So uh, a, a good six months after the, the work really started in, in, at the beginning of, of 2019. And then uh, at the end of the year 2019, uh, the, the French uh, parliament adopted uh, uh, at its draft budget law uh, a provision that said that now the, the publication of, of this green budget uh, analysis should be made mandatory every year for, for revision by the, by the parliament. And then, uh, sorry, presentation is blocked, okay. Uh, and then comes uh, in 2020, the, the COVID, uh, and as Marion was, was mentioning, this was again a, a big um, move forward for, for green budgets if it wasn't for, for the, the, the whole economy since for the recovery plans, uh, there was a European and French commitment uh, to, to really um, recover better than, than before and, and including in France it went uh, so as to say we, we will have zero uh, harmful spending in, in our uh, recovery plan, uh, which went uh, way beyond uh, the part that was only funded by, by the EU. It was the, the whole of the, the, the French recovery plan and the 30% of climate friendly uh, expenditure. So uh, you add on that the emergency of the situation of a post crisis uh, situation and the green budgeting tool with its uh, easy mapping of where uh, the money was spent in the right or the wrong way was a tool that was heavily used at, at this time in France. Uh, and then the, the, second re the first actually real uh, report uh, on green budget since the 2019 uh, one was a pilot uh, on methodology uh, was produced at the end of the COVID crisis and integrated the specific parts uh, dedicated to, to the recovery plan. And then uh, the second budget is now has now been the second green budget sorry has now been produced in 2022, um, and it's uh, on track to to continue uh, in the years afterward. Uh, I will uh, comment on this on this a bit later. Uh, but really, what here has been a, a yeah a 
the step for, for, for grand budgeting is, is this recovery plan, which is a new situation for, for a budget, new money, fresh money, you have to, to uh, spend it fast, uh, decide fast where it goes, and it's not blocked by past uh, commitments. So, uh, and you, yeah, you need uh, quick information. Um, maybe now uh, what we've seen uh, from I4C. So we started uh, on the topic, uh, actually, that was the following of a follow up of another project when we saw that the run wasn't moving enough in 2018. We started working on green budgeting with the aim of making them move. Uh, the Yellow Vest did that better than us, but still uh, it worked in the end. So the first publication uh, was uh, for us just before the budget was published to inform what was uh, going on uh, within the administration and within what we were ourselves doing. And we'll come back in a minute. What's a green budget, how it works, uh, where, what's the tool, what it's used, and, and so on. Then uh, just as the first methodology report was published, we published our own analysis of the French budget to provide a counterfactual uh, report to, to what was said in, in this first version that nobody knew actually what would come out of this first version. So that was making sure that it would get published because at some point that wasn't even sure. And then that, that uh, what was inside uh, was in line with what we had in mind of such, with such a, an assessment. And then uh, follow up publications on, on tax expenditures uh, and uh, existing green budgeting experiments. So trying to, 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 to put the spotlight on, on specific aspects of the, the, the report that, that we deemed important. And then when the, the COVID struck, we, we kept uh, on our work. The first part was about uh, trying to gather uh, existing best practices. And the second one uh, was uh, trying to move the methodology at the local government level. And then uh, keeping an eye of what was uh, on what uh, France was doing and trying to analyze their, their first green budgeting uh, publication, saying what was in there, what, what was missing, because some elements were missing, and we'll come back at this a bit, a bit later. And, uh, and then, yeah, gathering all uh, experience and trying to actually move from um, a technical report uh, to, to actual acts and, and trying to, to pinpoint what was, what was the, the, the the most important factors in, in such a green budgeting exercise to make sure that this didn't stay on the shelf. Uh, and that's uh, one of the latest publications uh, on, on this specific aspect, uh, making sure that green budgeting doesn't come along. I will come back at it uh, also a bit later, but uh, making sure that other tools are mobilized too. Otherwise, it's just uh, information and stays here. Um, in a nutshell, so on the why, I think Marion gave a very good overview. Uh, France's first green budget uh, took, tried to took in all taxes, tax exemptions, and uh, expenditure. Uh, also, annex budgets, so separate budgets for for specific purposes uh, beyond the, the general budget, and some uh, state agencies. What we found, so this is this is from our own analysis. That's not the, the government report, but they are really, really close in the end. And that was a, a good news for both of us, actually, uh, in their conclusions. Uh, so we, we identified around 250 climate-related measures, uh, which makes a total of nearly uh, 100 billion euros uh, related to, to climate in the French budget. Most of it is actually green measures. And most of it is actually totally unintended and could be more, made more efficient and so on. I will also come back at this a bit later. Um, on the tax side, uh, we identified around 25 climate-related taxes. Uh, what is interesting, I was just saying that most of it is unintended uh, in that 10 billion only has a climate purpose, carbon component or carbon tax uh, in various taxes. Most of it, uh, 33 billion, uh, has only like climate benefits, uh, which is the case of energy taxes without any climate labeling and also any climate calibration and some ambiguous taxes. Um, when I was talking about uh, calibration, what's interesting to see is, for example, uh, with cars, uh, it shows very well. Uh, we have some uh, investment fees uh, on, on polluting cars, but they make up uh, less than 10% of all uh, climate uh, taxes on climate-related taxes on, on cars. 
And actually the bulk of the taxes on cars are taxes on the fuel itself, which is usage tax and which won't help people change in the end. I mean, once the, the car is bought, that's really hard to, to change the behavior. So, so that's something that we pointed out in, in, this, in this specific study. Um, on, the, on the expenditure part, uh, we, we identified around 20 billion climate-friendly measures, uh, which is mostly budgetary spending uh, on renewable energy, on clean transportation, research, and building renovation. And uh, a bit more than, than 15 billion uh, climate damaging spending. And actually most of, the, of this is uh, tax exemptions. Tax exemptions for planes, for uh, DSL, for uh, off-road uh, fuel uses, and so on, and some operational expenses like uh, the fuel, like, like the fuel in air fighters, for example, which comes here. Uh, actually, most of these one billion uh, expenses only uh, to fuel uh, our uh, fighters uh, in France. Um, again, some some quick insights on that. Uh, the thing that operating expenses mattered, which is the hardest part maybe to identify in a, in a national budget. Uh, they make up uh, probably 15% of the budget, but it's totally scattered, really, really hard to monitor and aggregate. Um, most of it is actually uh, climate relevant because you have been there, transportation, heating, all the, 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 the flows, uh, energy flows in, in, in buildings and, and so on. So that's really important to, to, to track in the end. And there's a clear need for uh, leading the way uh, from the from the state. Uh, a need for exemplary, a need from uh, for also uh, supporting uh, emerging uh, actors, economic actors to to, to help steer uh, the whole economy towards a, uh, a better alignment with uh, national climate goals. And also identify the variety of tax niches. Uh, here's the uh, a figure showing. Um, on the x-axis, uh, the percentage of uh, greenhouse gases that are exempt uh, due to a specific tax niche, and in the y-axis, the, the amount of the exemption uh, that they benefit. So you see that, for example, uh, aircraft kerosene uh, make up uh, only, uh, quote-unquote, only 5% of uh, France's uh, greenhouse gas emission, but they, they benefit from a huge rebate uh, in terms of, of tax uh, exemption, which in the end uh, makes uh, a lot of money lost toward, to uh, uh, the managing uh, behavior uh, in terms of environment. Maybe some, some message that we are trying to, to, to drive through, and actually Marion talked already a bit about that, but a green budget, what we are trying to do in France now is, is pass this message through that a green budget is not a strategy. Um, that was a slide from, from Jonas as well, uh, between increasing uh, green, but also spending better and reducing brown, but also a, yeah, trying to, to, to improve uh, the spending and not only play with the, the amounts. Uh, there will be an issue with the, the brown that is left because you cannot uh, drive brown to zero. I was talking about the, the, the fighters just a bit before. Uh, uh, the country won't renounce and less, least of all now, uh, to its uh, defense spendings in the, name of, in the name of climate. So when you have a net zero commitment, uh, you have to, to come up with a strategy saying where uh, you will offset this, this specific spending and what you won't offset, you have to reduce it. Uh, there's the spend more versus spend better uh, uh, question. The national uh, priorities and different time horizon, you also have to, to hierarchize uh, in general, but also in time. What, what will be the, the, the actions of the state, and then you have all of the extra budgetary tools. So, so the green budget is only like a, a, a reporting tool providing information, but it won't make the decision. And the, the analogy I, I, I like to use in this case is that it's like you, you have to, to steer a boat, and the, the green budget here is only like your GPS uh, position, but then you need the strategy, you need the, the, the map saying where you want to go, through who, through where you want to you want to go to reach your, your endpoint and what, what, what your endpoint is in the end, what pitfalls you want to avoid, avoid and then uh, most of all, you need someone to take the decision. I mean, uh, green budgeting is only here to give information, but then 
you need uh, members of parliament, you need uh, decision makers to actually do that job and, and, and steer the transition away. And that's where also CSOs come in, uh, at least in, in France, uh, as I foresee, we've been talking a lot with uh, the, the Climate Action Network, who will be uh, presenting uh, just after uh, on how to, to engage civil society, how to, to demand uh, action uh, from, the, from the public, because we have good plans, we have good reporting tools, what we don't have is good decision making so far. Uh, so what now? Uh, the, so the One Planet Summit was the start of it for us. Uh, the, the Yellow Vest was the, the, the Kickstarter for the event and the COVID was kind of an accelerator. What, uh, hap what's happening now is two things. First, uh, France is, ha is uh, actually having the, the presidency of the European Union and second, uh, President Macron just got re-elected. What does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, France has been pushing forward at the European level for green budgeting to, to spread and be more used. And that's an interesting move. Let's see how it goes. But, but really, uh, the French presidency in this respect, I mean, the EU didn't wait for France to, to, to engage into, into green budgeting. But, but still, uh, there has been uh, two months ago a, a huge green budget conference. There, there, there's work going, going on uh, at the European level because of this uh, leadership, uh, let's say, uh, position on, on France boss uh, at the EU level and on green budgeting lately. Uh, and also uh, Macron in his uh, campaign program uh, committed to, to use all the money from fossil taxes in climate action, which would, would represent an increase of the, the current amounts, uh, an important increase of the current amounts, and most of all uh, committed to reduce and ultimately roll back all harmful spending. The two commitments here are specifically mentioned as uh, in the sense of green budgeting. So there's a, let's say, a bright future for this tool in, in, in France, uh, but also some, some pitfalls. Uh, we will have to make sure that uh, reducing taxes, uh, reducing negative taxes um, and spending tax money into the transition uh, doesn't come at the, at the cost of the, the scope of the, the exercise. So we will be trying to, to, to push this point forward uh, in the future. We will also have to make sure that uh, the French exercise avoids greenwashing, which was mentioned again by, by Marion, but coming under such pressure for, for achieving some specific objectives compared to this report, it's something really different from just producing information. And we've seen it already because, for example, for nuclear, uh, France changed their position uh, because they, have the, they had this huge taxonomy debate. Nuclear switched from mixed to, to green in the green budgeting exercise in France. And that's some kind of things that we want to make sure that doesn't happen too much or uh, doesn't happen without uh, any scientific base. Uh, and that's uh, that's something that uh, where uh, a lot of uh, institutions have to, to, to weigh in, uh, research institutions, uh, CSOs, and also uh, official audits uh, organizations. So that, that's a huge effort now that to make sure that this tool remains a piloting tool and not uh, only a communication tool. Uh, making it an effective constraints, uh, we, we had the case uh, in France that uh, the air, uh, I mean, plane makers and car makers uh, were given money uh, in the recovery plan and they had to, to, to respect some constraints. But in the end, we are seeing now that these were totally non-binding and this was supposed to, to be compared to some green budgeting. I mean, appeared at the, the French green budgeting in, in green or at, at least neutral uh, spending, but in the end, it, it wasn't at all. So, so here, there's also an issue of, of quotation and, and making sure that the exercise provides the, the right guarantees that, that what uh, is green is actually green in the end. And the last uh, and probably most important point of all is making sure that this tool is included in, in long-term planning and, and decision-making and part of a long-term uh, strategical uh, thinking for, for public finance that, that includes uh, climate change from the start in the, in the thinking of the strategy. So I will, I will uh, stop here and, and pass the floor to, to Emily and happy to, to discuss it further uh, in, the, in the discussion afterwards. Uh, Marion, do you want me to keep uh, showing the slides, or do you want uh, to do it? Keep going. Okay, perfect. Okay, that's my turn, I guess. Uh, thank you. So first and foremost, thank you for hosting this event and inviting us, and for everyone who is here today and is interested in this subject. 
because it's a really important subject and it's really amazing that we can share our experience on tax expenditures and green budgeting in France. So I will not focus on presenting the green budget since Marion and Sebastian already did it really well, uh, but more on sharing our experience and our analysis on this green budget. So I start now. Uh, as you know, the French Green Budget has been published um, for three years now. And since then, uh, the French uh, branch of the Climate Action Network has been doing its analysis. So you can go to the next slide. Uh, three subjects rises by doing this work. So first, the importance of tax and budget expenditures harmful for the climate in France and the flawed methodology used by the government to count them. Secondly, the need to increase our green spendings. And then what public policy, policies should follow such report. So I will present you these three key points. So uh, first, the importance of tax and budget expenditures harmful for the climate in France. So by doing the green budget analysis, we discovered that this tool, which has been developed first for transparency and information, is more and more used as a way to hide some harmful expenses. And that's why we also publish a report about tax and budget expenditures harmful for the climate and the biodiversity each year. So in the fall, the Can Friends is publishing a report. It takes a lot of time, but it's really interesting uh, because this is our main tool to communicate about the green budget and is uh, often used by uh, deputies and uh, other uh, colleagues to communicate on the green budget. But what's so interesting, uh, what's really interesting is when we count 25 billion euros that are harmful for the climate and for the biodiversity, the government only counts uh, 10 billion. So the following question would be, why such differences? Well, because we don't have the same methodology. And it shows the importance of having a large perimeter when doing such work. Um, because to have a global vision about um, a government harmful uh, climate spending, you must consider a large perimeter, which includes all kinds of subventions to fossil fuels. And in the French budget, sometimes uh, some tax ex expenditures are not included. Uh, for example, we already talked about it a little bit, but the lack of kerosene fuel taxes for air services uh, is not included in the government's uh, analysis, even though it costs more than 3.5 billion of euros each year. Uh, another example is a shortfall due to the difference in taxation between diesel and gasoline, which also represent 3.5 billion of euros each year. And in fact, by not considering the, um, these kinds of tax expenditures, the green budget hides some important harmful spendings. But that's really hard to communicate uh, <laughs> to everyone by saying, hey, you know what? Uh, our government is doing something crazy. It's not counting the difference in diesel and gasoline, etc." So that's why we have this tool, which is uh, our report, because it's, more, it's easier to communicate with that. And there are also another subject that we would like to include, uh, but we really can't do it because of the lack of information on it. Uh, but it's the financial help that the government is offering to corporations post COVID-19, as uh, Sebastian said. Um, in France, the government decided to offer this help without any previous environmental or social demands that are uh, binding, so it can lead to financing some corporation who doesn't respect the carbon budget or corporations that have a huge impact on climate change without any counterparts. So that's something we are trying to include in our methodology, but the lack of information on it prevents us to doing so. Even though it would be a really interesting exercise uh, because that it's something um, that citizens are really interested in. So to conclude on uh, this part, uh, the methodology is an important point to identify when you are an NGO working on this subject. Uh, it's certainly one of the most important points for us uh, after doing this analysis. And that's something the deputies or even ministry cabinets are aware of. And that's something they can work on. So uh, you can go to the next slide. 
then, then comes the question of the green spendings. So once we have identified uh, the harmful spendings for the climate and biodiversity, we have the other subjects, which is almost a mirror subject of uh, such uh, work, which is identifying how much money is spent each year for climate and biodiversity. So according to the French Green Budget, spending that are at least environmentally friendly on one line of approach represent 42 billion euros, which represents a little bit more than 6% of the total French budget. But what's interesting is that in comparison, it's less than the Ministry of Environment budget that has a 49.9 million euros budget. And in fact, by analyzing the green budget, we can see that we have more than 5 million billion budgetaries and taxes expenditures of the ministry that are harmful for the climate and the biodiversity. So we have 2.5 billion budgetary expenditures and 3 billion tax expenditures. So footnote for NGOs, it's really interesting to look carefully at these green spendings because it can really say a lot about the place of climate and biodiversity in your government budget. And that's why uh, the, conference, the conference is asking for a pluriannual financial bill for ecological transition, because right now the French budget is really not as green as it should be. And you can go to the next slide. Uh, in fact, we even have uh, uh, several demands about this green budget. Uh, because one of its most uh, important problem, as Sebastian said, is that nothing is following up this analysis. So the government is doing this analysis and it's great, even though, as I said, uh, it is flawed. But we don't have any action that are taken about all these tax expenditures harmful for the climate and the biodiversity. And in fact, it would not be completely crazy to think that after realizing that billions of euros each year are spending in a way that is harmful for the climate and that only a small portion of the French budget is dedicated to the environment, that a government we will start to think about how we could eradicate these harmful spendings and how we could increase green spendings. But right now it's not the case. That's why each fall, when we publish our reports, we also talk about what should follow the green budget. So that's why we are asking for a national strategy to eradicate the sample spendings. And to do so, we are asking for a consultation with all the actors that are concerned by these tax expenditures. For us, it's really important that the weight of such eradication will not be supported by the already disadvantaged households. As Marion said earlier, um, the example of the yellow vest, uh, we all have it in mind and it was uh, really important in France and we don't want to do that again. And um, as we uh, say in France, uh, when you have a, a niche, you always have a dog with biting your hands. And it's really important to have that in mind and to uh, discuss with everyone who will be affected by this uh, eradication. And also, as I previously said, uh, we are asking for a pluriannual financial bill for ecological transition. So what we follow such a green budget is at the heart of the subject, because this budgetary instrumentation for the environment is not just about having a vision about public expenditures and revenues. It's really about having a pluriannual vision. And it's even more important for environment because the fight uh, against environmental deterioration uh, fits by its nature in the long run. So um, to conclude, even if France is publishing this green budget for several years now, it's still really flawed. And it's really time to expand the scope of tax and budgetary expenditures, or even shortfalls that are taken into account for elaborating this green budget uh, in order to give a global vision about harmful spending for climate and biodiversity in France. And now that we have identified uh, such spendings, it's time to do something about it and take action to eradicate it. And it's time to increase urban spendings. 
So the green budget, as Marion and Sebastian said already, but the green budget should not only be a tool for the government to communicate about climate, biodiversity, environment. Uh, it should really be the start to strong public policies for the environment. So I try to be really quick because I know we were late, but like, thank you so much for your attention and I'd be pleased to answer any of your questions if I can. And if we have time, I know we're running late. <laughs> Thank you, Emlyn. Uh, so because we are running late, maybe we will go straight forward to the presentation from Muriel. Okay, the that's panel. fine. <clears throat> that's fine. Uh, good afternoon to everybody and thank you very much to uh, I4C for the, the organization of this very interesting event. Uh, thank you also for the very interesting presentations before. So I will try to be quite quick since we are a little late. Uh, so first of all, uh, Fondation IDEA. What is Fondation IDEA exactly? It's a think tank in uh, Luxembourg. It's the only one in Luxembourg actually. And it was created about uh, a little bit less than 10 years ago by the Luxembourg Chamber of Commerce uh, in, in, in order to enhance the, the social economic debate in Luxembourg. So we try to do in a neutral scientific way. Um, we we deal with uh, many issues. Huh? We are not really a specialist, let's say, of uh, green budgeting. We we deal with many issues like macroeconomics, uh, labor markets, social issues, cross-border cooperation, uh, which is so important for Luxembourg with France, Germany, and Belgium. And uh, we also cope a lot with um, uh, sustainability, long-term sustainability of public finances, pensions, for instance. But we are of the opinion that we have to have a coherent stance, let's say. So it's not sufficient to be, uh, let's say, uh, sustainable for public finances. We also try to be sustainable uh, from the green and energy point of view. And so we decided to embark a little bit on green sustainability, on green budgeting. Uh, so the next slide, please. And so, uh, as I told you, we are not really a full-blown specialist of green budgeting, but uh, since we have made a specific contribution to uh, the development, the promotion of green budgeting in, uh, in Luxembourg, uh, we were not very far uh, so far. And so we decided to um, produce an opinion. Uh, it's in the framework of the draft budget in Luxembourg. It's a very important process in Luxembourg. So as in all other countries, of course, uh, very state budgets, and it is presented every uh, every October, generally, usually, um, before the, the Luxembourg Parliament, and it's voted in uh, December. It's not very uh, astonishing in a, in a way, and so it means that during uh, several months we have a very uh, a full blown process, let's say, uh, during which we can debate, we can discuss with politicians, with members of members of parliament. I have to say that it's very open in Luxembourg and it's a very good thing uh, from this point of view. And uh, we have to produce several institutions. Uh, it could be uh, trade unions. It could be, uh, let's say, uh, also uh, Chamber of Commerce, Chambre des Métiers and so on, many institutions, environmental, uh, let's say, think tanks and so on. Uh, so they produce opinions uh, on the, the draft budget. And we, we did also like this. And I think I have to say that we enjoyed a very good media coverage in Luxembourg, of course, uh, on this, uh, this opinion of IDEA we made on the, the budget. And um, it was usually it's uh, published on the, on the internet site of the finance ministry and it's quite prominent. So uh, quite commented also in the, the, in the press. And it was not in the last opinion, but it, in the opinion before, our opinion on the 2021 uh, draft budget of the government, uh, we decided to make this proposal for uh, a new green budget in Luxembourg, because we were not so, as I told before, we were not very far in this field in Luxembourg. And so we made, uh, we proposed several amendments, not just the green budget, but the green budget was very prominent in our presentation, in our opinion. 
And first of all, we presented what is the green budget because it's not so self-evident for many, uh, many people in Luxembourg huh, what is exactly the green budget. And so we, we present it exactly based on the French experience, I have to say. And so, uh, uh, for instance, the annex to the, to the budget in France. And uh, the next slide, please. Voila. We made a concrete proposal on, on this, on green, green budgeting. Found that ultimately, if we have to, to have a, a very good long-term goal, let's say. We have to be exhaustive. We have to, we have to flag, uh, ideally, all public revenue expenditure, tax expenditure. What is positive, negative, neutral? If I, you know uh, better than me, uh, uh, I would be tempted to say, uh, based on several criteria. Uh, you presented the criteria. The, the, the six criteria in your presentation. And so that's the ultimate uh, objective, let's say, and ideally for general government, so it should be for central government, but also ideally, but maybe it's a long-term issue, but for local governments and uh, extra budgetary institutions. So that's the ultimate goal. And from a more, let's say, pragmatic point of view, uh, we propose um, a step by step approach um, because that's the very ultimate very long term objective but we have to produce something in the something more pragmatic in the in the short term let's say and so we propose the step by step approach in terms of time in terms of resources and so we propose as a starting point tax expenditure and so if you could go to the next slide so you see here a presentation of a short ex presentation of tax expenditure in Luxembourg. So first of all, the amount it's close to two percent of GDP, and as you you can see on the on the chart, uh, two thirds of tax expenditure in Luxembourg are concerned are related to uh, housing. So you see it could be the three uh, percent decreased VAT rate, let's say on the dwellings lower subscription taxes in red, exem exemption of the capital gain on house sales, or it could be a tax deduction of mortgage interest rates. And only the part in blue are not related to housing. So you see that it's mainly related to, to, to housing. And what we propose so is to concentrate first, huh, so that the first step on the tax expenditure. Uh, first of all, to but that's not really um, green budgeting. But first of all, the first recommendation was to make uh, this uh, tax expenditure conditional of on incomes. It's not the case for the moment, and conditional of on uh, green housing. So, for instance, uh, isolation of uh, energy, isolation of dwellings. Um, and, and then green budgeting is stricto sensu, so to make an assessment of the list of tax expenditure, is it neutral, favorable, not favorable, from the environmental point of view with the six, uh, six or more, uh, let's see, criteria. And then based on this first experience, the, the idea would be to, to do a, a gradual extension on this to uh, expenditure and revenue, traditional, I would say, expenditure and revenue. You can go to the next. So two methodological challenges, let's say, in this, uh, this proposal to focus on, uh, on, tax, uh, on tax expenditure. But the first one is that one could say that it's not fully compliant with the commission's reference framework. Um, because um, they explicitly state in the framework in a specific table that we should first ideally focus on uh, traditional, let's say, revenue expenditure and only afterwards on tax expenditure. So we propose the opposite in a sense in the case of Luxembourg, but we have to say that I think that we have to be, find the, the commission reference framework is a very interesting uh, framework. Uh, that we should, let's say, be compliant with the spirit of the framework, but that we have to be flexible as regards, let's say, the very specific recommendations, uh, depending on the depending on the national situation. We have to be pragmatic. We have to be flexible. And uh, in Luxembourg, uh, tax expenditure are large, so it's a very interesting field. 
to concentrate on. And uh, secondly, as I told you, two thirds are related to housing. And housing is a big challenge in Luxembourg, big economic challenge, big so social challenge. And uh, it's a very interesting one. So uh, I think it's very interesting to, to begin with such, such issues. Uh, so not to, I think it would be a mistake to begin uh, green budgeting with very complicated and very, uh, let's say, uh, you, you see very esoteric in a sense, um, uh, feels um, not related to the social economic issues in Luxembourg. It's very important at the beginning, beginning to be able to, to, to produce the momentum, let's say, uh, just to steer the political debate, uh, and uh, not only with uh, specialists, experts, but also, well, not to say the population, it maybe it's uh, to say too much, but you see, you see the points with, uh, let's say, uh, with uh, many organizations and trade unions and political parties and so on. So I think it's very important to begin with, uh, let's say, what is at the core of economic and social policy in a given country. Well, that's my opinion. Uh, just to give a momentum because it's not it doesn't it's not self-evident that the, the debate could be so easy to uh, let's say to to launch let's say yeah? and so that's the the first point um the second possible methodolic methodological uh, issue let's say is that the, the list of public expenditure is not exhaustive. Let's say we disregard several items, for instance, company cars. But I would say that it's not so much of a problem because what is important in such a case is that you have a, a list which is a good, a reliable starting point, which is reasonably stable from one year to the other. And in the case of Luxembourg, that's clearly the case. For the list of tax expenditure, it is about the same from one year to the other, and it's about already five years that we have this list on a regular basis, so annual basis, of course, with the, the budget. And uh, the amounts are calculated each year, updated each year, just like the traditional budget, let's say. So it's a reliable starting point. Of course, we should try to extend the list and so to have a more comprehensive list. And then afterwards, we go to, other, to expenditure and to revenue, but that's another point. But at least we have a good, reliable starting point. So the next slide, please. I think the, it's the last one. So just uh, now the progress report in Luxembourg. So um, in spite of our recommendations, there was, but it's very difficult to do, of course, huh? uh, there was no direct integration of this, of the green budget in the, the very last budget, huh? presented uh, last October and voted uh, last December. But uh, I, I think it's a normal situation because uh, that cannot be uh, so quick. Uh, if it's too quick, it could be flowed, as was explained in the, the previous presentation, for instance. Um, and uh, But what is much better is that in the very recent stability program of Luxembourg, you see in the framework of the European semester, so the stability program of Luxembourg was presented. It was last week in, on Friday, so it's very recent. And uh, it was explicit. It, it was explicitly referred to the to the green budget. So in the medium term, the green budgeting methodology will evolve depending on the experience gathered on the ground and through the efforts made at European level in order to develop the re related tools. It's the very first time we have such a sentence uh, on the green budgeting, so it's a good sign. And uh, so, so much more important, I would say. Uh, is that when we made the recommendation in our recommendations we asked for Luxembourg to be to be to be involved let's say in the Paris collaborative on green budgeting uh, it's a very good thing from networking let's say and to have an access to met methodological tools but of course it's not a very big surprise to you that uh, Luxembourg is not a very big country and so it doesn't go without saying that we will be able to let's say uh, uh, develop uh, um, develop from from scratch let's say um, a very um, excellent methodology and so it's very important for us to have uh, networking in this field and to have the possibility to access to methodological tools um, 
this was a prominent recommendation we made and it was followed by the, the Luxembourg government. And now we are on the green, uh, on the Paris collaborative on green, green budgeting with 14 countries. Well, you presented a chart in your presentation where Luxembourg is quite prominent uh, as a participant country. And so it's a very good thing, I, I, I think. And so I would be tempted to say that we have to be vigilant huh, to follow uh, to follow closely what uh, and this is still a work in progress huh, for sure. Uh, I would even say that uh, we are beginning the foundations, let's say. Um, but I would be reasonably optimistic uh, from the Luxembourg perspective. So thank you very much for your attention. So it's finished. Thank you, Muriel. Uh, very interesting to know that uh, Luxembourg is uh, is joining the Paris Collaborative uh, Agreement and that um, there is a mention on green budgeting in your stability program. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so what I suggest now is that we have the discussion. So I'm going to stop the record.